Here we are with Chapter 3 of The Bullet by Yugi Yami Fangirl. Author's note. Here's the next chapter. Sorry that it's late, but I'm finding it hard to write this story. I know what I want to try. I'm just having trouble trying to organise those thoughts into words, so these chapters might take longer. Enjoy! Chapter 3. Waiting. Domino General Hospital was usually quiet. It rarely had many truly serious patients unless it came from a car accident or a gang fight. Other than that, it didn't get very busy in the ER. This day was different. Ambulances were arriving with patients from the shooting at Domino High School. Two paramedics came rushing in with Yugi on a gurney. What do we have here? A female doctor with red hair and blue eyes asked hurriedly as she ran over. Another victim from the Domino High shooting. He was shot in the head. Vitals aren't good. One paramedic said. Yes, being shot in the head won't be very good for your vitals, will it? All right, we need blood for him. We need to prep him for surgery, the doctor said. Then she shouted a few more orders that nurses quickly began to follow. Um, just a personal note from me. The doctor isn't actually Taya. It's just I have very few female voices I can do. And even the Taya one's a bit debatable. Anyway, the gang got to the hospital. Since none of them were injured, they couldn't go in the ambulance because in such situations, ambulances could only be used for those who were injured. Those free-ride-denying bastards! Yami was beyond worried, and he was near hysterics. Atamu stayed close to his brother because he knew that his brother could have a meltdown at any time, but he was also keeping a close eye on Haber because he knew that boyfriend could be the same way. I'll go and see what I can find out about Yugi, Seto said before walking off. Come on! We need to get out of the way, Bakora said. The group got out of the way. Yami sat down. His hands were shaking, and every gruesome possibility ran through his head. Yugi dying was at the top of his list. Taya sat down beside Yami. Don't worry, Yami. Yugi's a strong person. He'll be just fine, Taya said. It was just so bad. How could... Yami didn't want to finish the sentence. He'll be okay. They'll save him, Ryu added. He too was on the verge of tears. Bakura held Ryu as he tried to keep his own emotions from showing. Did did someone c call Grandpa? Haber asked in a shaky voice. Since Teo was looking after Yami, Atamu turned his attention to Haber. He wrapped his arm around his boyfriend in an attempt to calm him down. Yeah, I called. He's on the way, Joey said. He didn't tell them that Solomon had been shocked and horrified to find out that Yugi had been shot, but Solomon was on his way to the hospital. What, did Joey expect Solomon to be pleased? Seto soon returned to them. Did you find out anything? Malik asked. Yes, they've gotten Yugi stabilized, but they can't do any surgery yet, Seto said. Why not? He could die without it, Haber exclaimed. They can't operate without consent. They need his grandfather to give consent, Seto said. What weird hospital works this way? Anyway, back to the story. Damn it! Isn't there something we can do? Yami asked, desperate to save his boyfriend's life. Before Seto could answer, Solomon came running up to them. Where is Yugi? How is he? Solomon demanded. He's stable, but they can't operate without your consent, Seto said. Where are they? Solomon asked, intending to give his full consent. Then the doctor, who had first saw Yugi when he came into the ER, walked up to them. Is there a guardian here for Yugi Mutu? The doctor asked. Yes, I'm Yugi's grandfather, Solomon said. Mr. Mutu, I'm Dr. Reed. Wait a minute, nobody told me this was going to be a crossover with Scrubs. Moving on. How is he? Solomon asked. We have him stabilized, but we're going to need to perform surgery to remove the bullet as well as take care of any other damage, Dr. Reed said. Do whatever you need to, just save my grandson, Solomon said. I'll do everything I can for him, Dr. Reed replied. She then walked off. So what now? Serenity asked. The only thing we can do is wait, Seto said. Solomon turned to the teenagers. What exactly happened? Solomon asked. Since he was the most calm, Seto decided to tell him. We were about to head into the school after break. We got up and then shoots started to be fired. We could hear them. Everything went to hell, Seto said. Solomon didn't like it when they would curse, but at this time, he couldn't have cared less. Everyone went into a panic. Everyone was running and screaming trying to get away. We were all separated at the time. More shoots were fired. Seto said. He glanced over at Yami. Yami was the first one to find Yugi. He had already been shot. The rest of us soon found them. By then, the shooting had stopped. 
Someone had called for ambulances, so it wasn't long before someone came to help Yugi. Presumably Kaiba was too rich to do it himself. They got him in the ambulance fast and brought Yugi here. You know the rest, Seto said. Solomon nodded. I hope they find out who did this and make them pay for it, Tristan growled, knowing that they were the cause of his friends being in the hospital now. They would have just gotten started. We should know something before too long, though, Seto said. I would just rather know that Yugi's going to be okay, Haber said. We should know something soon, Seto said. Why don't all of you go home? You have been through enough for one day. I'll stay here and let you know what happens, Solomon said. I can't leave Grandpa. I'll just drive myself crazy not knowing. I'd never be able to relax. Not now, Yami said. Neither could I, Haber added. All the other teenagers voiced the same thoughts. I understand. We'll all wait and hear about Yugi, Solomon said. By this time, other people had come in wanting to know about their kids, who had been caught in the shooting at the school. Only three hours had passed since the surgery had started, but to everyone, it seemed like an eternity had passed. Joey, Tristan and Malik were all pacing the floor nervously. Seto was on his laptop, trying to keep himself distracted, presumably by flagging videos on YouTube. Bakura and Marik were actually behaving themselves. They were getting everyone coffee or tea to try and settle their nerves some. Haber had been a nervous wreck and was constantly going over the possibility of losing his brother. Atomu was trying to keep Haber from actually snapping. Solomon would flip between pacing and going to see a nurse to try and find out how Yugi was doing. Ryu was sitting mostly and trying to stay calm. Mokuba and Serenity were sitting close to each other and holding on to one another as they waited anxiously for the news on their friend. Teo was staying close to Yami and trying to keep her friend from falling apart. Yami was a complete wreck. He was constantly going over the possibility of what could happen to his boyfriend. He was also extremely nervous because he couldn't sense Yugi through the link, and that was making him even more nervous since he was always able to sense Yugi through the link. Finally, Joey had taken all that he could stand. Why is it taking so long? Joey asked. He had obviously reached the end of his patience. Seto looked up. Joey, something like this is going to take time. Any surgery is risky. But they are virtually doing brain surgery. And that is something that is extremely delicate. It could take several more hours, Seto said. I don't think I can stand that, Joey said. You'll stand it as long as we do. You're not the only one worried, and you're certainly not the only one who is tired of not knowing what's going on, Bakura said. I know that. I just wish they'd at least tell us what's happening, Joey said. Solomon sighed. We'll know something when they tell us. I would rather they concentrate on what they're doing and save Yugi's life over telling us. We can deal with it. As long as they save Yugi's life, we can all deal with this. A little waiting and worrying is preferable to the worst possible outcome, Solomon said. Everyone knew that he was right. Yami bit his lip. I can't lose Yugi. I couldn't take it if I do. He means everything to me, Yami thought. He closed his eyes, trying to stop the thought of Yugi dying from running through his mind. Please, Ra, don't let Yugi die. I can't live without him, Yami thought. Taya looked at her friend and could easily tell how upset Yami was. Poor Yami, I can't imagine how he feels, Taya thought. She let her gaze drift over to where Tristan was still nervously pacing the floor. I don't know how I would be able to keep myself together if it was Tristan that was in surgery now. I know how much Yugi and Yami love each other. Anyone who sees them can see that. They don't deserve this. Taya thought sadly. She herself was extremely worried about Yugi. For that matter, none of us could handle losing Yugi. Yugi is without a doubt my best friend. I don't know that I could handle that. He means so much to me. To us all. It would destroy every one of us if we lost him. Taya thought. Another half hour passed before anyone said anything. Seto, have you heard anything on what happened at the school? Do they know anything? Ryu asked. All eyes turned to Seto. Yeah. They figured out where the shooting come from. Come from? Are we in Yorkshire? It was that old abandoned building across from the school. They don't know who did it yet, but they have possible suspects in mind. No word on who they are, but according to that, the police have said they're hunting for them. Said I said. Any clues why they did this? Marek asked. No. Probably won't find that until after they find out who's responsible. We still might not find out a reason for this. At least not one that we're going to want to hear, Seto said. Atamu growled. There's no excuse for something like this. You can't justify shooting into a schoolyard full of teenagers, Atamu said. I agree with you there. 
It's a good thing that the police didn't say who they think did this, because if they did, I'd be out there hunting them down right now. Bakura growled. All eyes turned to Bakura. What? Bakura asked. We were just wondering why you act like that. We never seem to care about anyone except for Ryu, Tristan said. It also sounds like something you would do, Seto added. Bakura glared at them. I'm not crazy enough to shoot into a schoolyard. Like Atamu said, it's not right. I don't kill people either. I just like to mess with them, Bakura said. And he does care about our entire group, though he'd never actually admit it, Ryu spoke up. Bakura looked away from them. I do not, Bakura muttered. The entire group knew that that was a lie. As well as I like the thought that you'd do that, Bakura, in this case I think it would be better if you didn't go after them. With the police looking for them, they might arrest you as well, Solomon said. Bakura shrugged. It was a nice thought from me, Bakura said. Any idea if anyone else was hurt? Yami asked softly. Three were killed at the school. Another two dozen were brought here to the hospital for treatment. Some were serious, like with Yugi, and some were minor. Probably injured from the panic the school went into, Seto said. What about those that were serious? Malik asked. No word. Besides, it doesn't really matter right now. All that matters is finding out if Yugi is going to be alright or not, Seto said. No one argued with that. After another two hours, the gang finally got an answer to their wish. After a total of five hours in the operating room, Dr. Reed walked out and went over to where the group was. Solomon turned to her and said, Dr. Reed, how is my grandson? The entire group stood up. The surgery went fine. We didn't have any trouble, Dr. Reed said. Will he be all right? Joey asked. I'll be honest, it's too soon to tell. I can't tell you when he'll wake up either. We have him in the ICU right now. With a head injury like this, he needs to be watched carefully, Dr. Reed said. I understand, Solomon said. From what we saw, I don't think that there will be any permanent damage to him. But there are some side effects that may occur, Dr. Reed said. Like what? Haper asked worriedly. Well, there's a good chance he might not remember today at all. He will most likely not even remember the shooting. Which in my experience has been a good thing. He could also have temporary amnesia, Dr. Reed asked. Um, she asked an answer? Amnesia. He might not remember anything, Seto asked. It is possible. It could be partial amnesia, total amnesia, and it could just be he doesn't remember today. There's no way to know until he wakes up, Dr. Reed said. Thank you. Can we see him? Solomon asked. Of course. Please, only two at a time and make the visit short. Once he's more stable, we'll move him into a regular room. I will tell you that he'll be in the ICU for a few days, at least, Dr. Reed said. Thank you, Solomon said. Dr. Reed nodded. If you'll follow me, I'll take you to see him, Dr. Reed said. Haber knew how upset Yami was, and he knew that Yami wanted to see Yugi more than anyone. Yami, why don't you go with Grandpa to see him, Haber said. Normally, Yami would have probably argued against it, saying that Haber was Yugi's brother and should go, but Yami didn't have it in him to argue and nodded. Solomon and Yami followed Dr. Reed back into the ICU and to the room where Yugi was. Yugi was hooked up to several machines. There was a bandage that was wrapped around his head. He also had an oxygen mask over his face. His eyes were closed, of course. Of course! As M. Bison would say. Yami silently gulped. He didn't like seeing Yugi like this. However, he did walk over and take Yugi's hand in his own. How long will he be on the oxygen? Solomon asked. He'll most likely be taken off it by the end of the day. It's just a precaution. As long as he can breathe on his own, he won't have to be on it, Dr. Reed said. Do you know when he might wake up? Solomon asked. There's no way to judge that. I'll be honest, with an injury like this, it could be a few days before he does wake up. Dr. Reed said. Solomon nodded. Dr. Reed then walked off. Solomon looked over. It broke his heart to see his 17-year-old grandson like this, and it hurt even more to see Yami, the normally clam and in-control teen, look so utterly lost and devastated. Yami wasn't really aware that Solomon was in the room. He hated seeing his boyfriend in this state, but it also relieved him because it meant that Yugi was still alive. He tightened his old on Yugi's hand. I'm sorry, Yugi. This shouldn't have happened to you. I should have protected you better, Yami said quietly. I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light! Now, moving on. A hand on his shoulder brought Yami out of his thoughts. He turned to look at Solomon. Don't blame yourself, Yami. You are not to blame for this. You didn't know this was going to happen, so you couldn't have prevented it, Solomon said. But, Yami started.